I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is a very nice uh, antique slant top desk. I think maybe from the early 19th century. The uh, reason I say this is it's made of solid mahogany, which was very popular at that time. And also, uh, the dovetails, they seem uh, a bit bold, uh, robust to me. I think earlier ones were a little more delicate, but I'm not sure about that at all. One of the problems with this desk is that the drawers don't work very well at all. They don't come out and go back in easily. You can see that the drawer sides have problems. This is a looks like it may have been an old repair. And then the drawer runners themselves have problems too. There's also uh, a big crack down the side of this, and uh, we'll talk about that later. And in the interior, some of the brackets on these little pigeonholes are, uh, are missing, but they're not missing. I mean, someone saved them, thank goodness, and, uh, and some other pieces too. So they need to be put back where they belong. And other than that, uh, aside from the repair work, we'll just do some cleaning and waxing. We'll start with the uh, worst one. You can see this side, of course, is all busted up. It's been repaired. Uh, you know, it hasn't lasted. Uh, you can see that the drawer bottom was nailed in uh, along here. Uh, that's come loose. Uh, there used to be a, a support added to the underside of this drawer bottom, which is cracked. This side doesn't seem as bad, but it is worn. So I really need to take this apart. Uh, to repair this drawer side and to repair the bottom also.
this looks like it's glued. So I did get some splintering here. I mean, I did the best I could. Uh, I think I'll end up uh, maybe adding a little wood to the back end of this bottom, and then I will uh, trim this and plane it a little bit. You can make a case for just making an entirely new bottom, but I like saving the old stuff, so uh, I'm going to glue this back together. I'm also going to mill up some pine to a quarter inch, which is the thickness of this bottom, so we can add some to the back here.
Okay, I'm going to set this aside for the time being. So that we can get started on the drawer repairs. Because the side of the drawer is broken above the dado or the groove into which the bottom sits, I've got to take these sides off to add more wood. This is the worst drawer. I don't think I'm going to have to take such a drastic steps on the other ones. More nails, of course. Little splits like this can occur. The important thing is to get them glued back as soon as possible. So we ended up with 27 nails in that drawer, two of which were original. So I want to cut just a little bit above the dado that held the drawer bottom. I'm afraid that uh, this drawer is going to need the same treatment. The sides are too far gone. I gotta be sure to get this little piece back in there. I don't think I need to remove the bottom from the back piece of the drawer. It's got those big uh, original nails in it anyway.
One thing I did not anticipate is that when I added this uh, new piece of wood at sort of a random width, I didn't leave enough wood to complete that dovetail. Uh, structurally it's fine, but it's not exactly something you can be proud of. I'll have to patch that. Okay, uh, this doesn't really need to be clamped. The dovetails are so tight, it's fine. As long as I just leave it sit here on the bench and don't move it till tomorrow, it'll be fine. show you one of the reasons I like using hide glue on these antiques. These joints are hard to clean out and you can see that there's the glue that in here is, is hide glue. And since the new hide glue I'm using, the old brown glue, is hot, I feel like it dissolves that glue and kind of reactivates it. Now remember, I left this bottom attached to the back because it still has the original uh, large nails in it. It's, it's never been taken off and I didn't want to mess it up. Oh, this dovetail came out pretty good. These other drawers, uh, don't seem bad. Uh, this one's been repaired before. Uh, this one doesn't have new wood. The old wood's been repaired. 
Uh, I have to do something about these nails, though. These nails destroy the cabinet. You notice I'm not using any nails for my drawer repairs. These nails just destroy the rails. Even in this cabinet, it's got these shipping stickers on the sides of the drawers, and these nails are hurting the sides of the cabinet. Here's that drawer bottom I glued up. Uh, by and large, it went together well. I have one space here that needs to be uh, puttied up, but it's good. Uh, I'm going to scrape away the glue, scrape away this paint or whatever it is, uh, do a little sanding, and we've got to trim up the edges and uh, fit it to the drawer. I've sanded this up uh, pretty smooth now. It looks good. Uh, before we trim this and fit it, I also uh, have sanded the bottom of the, this piece, not as much, but I kind of puttied this, feathered it out, and now I'm going to glue some uh, veneer down across this crack, hopefully give it a little strength. I cut some strips of two ply veneer here. I'm going to put down some glue and then just weight it down. Well, the drawer bottom seems nice and uh, sturdy now. So if you remember, the front edge got all splintered because it was glued into the drawer front. So I'm going to rip this, uh, reshape the front edge, uh, cross-cut my new piece of wood back here, and see how it fits. Okay, now for the big moment to uh, see if the drawer bottom will slide down in there. I've taken a lot of uh, trouble to measure the slot and then correspondingly measure my edge here to make sure that it will go. Okay, now I can mark this and cut it. I didn't want to cut it beforehand.
drawer bottom is not really square. I'll just plane down to the line though at this end. The bottoms can't extend past the back of the drawers. The drawers go all the way to the back of the cabinet. When they built pieces like this, they didn't really allow for shrinkage or anything, and it's too bad. I still got a couple of the original nails that came out of the bottom. good. They'll do nicely. Now I've pre-drilled these nail holes. I don't want any surprises when I'm pounding nails into antique furniture. I want to get some stain on the new wood. I've mixed up some uh, medium brown walnut stain with some paint thinner, like maybe what, one to two. You're never going to match this wood, but we need to get rid of the white wood. Yeah, that looks all right. I want to move on to the case now, and uh, the first thing I want to address is this big crack in the side. There were two screws going from the outside of the case uh, into the drawer runner. I removed those already and uh, didn't seem to do anything. Inside the case you can see that there's three screws going through the drawer runner into the carcass. I'm going to remove those screws. I'm going to put a clamp on it and see if it moves. Interestingly, there's no corresponding crack in the top, nor is there a crack in the bottom. Hmm. I'm not seeing or feeling any movement at all. Which doesn't surprise me, given there's no corresponding cracks. Uh, it seems stable. Because this break uh, occurred naturally, it may serve as an expansion and contraction joint now. And because it doesn't pose any structural issues at all, we don't really need to do anything about it. I'll be making new drawer runners uh, for these two drawers, and I, I won't use these screws to put it back. The next issue that we need to address is this rail. This rail is completely broken from that dovetail. So I'm going to apply some heat to this other side and see if I can uh, get it loose. Typically, I'll have the uh, heat gun on a medium setting. You can use a hair dryer too. I keep it at least six inches away. You do not want to scorch the wood. I do it in two minute increments. I'll do it for two minutes uh, until I see the glue start to move and soften. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this end, add a new piece of wood, and cut a new dovetail. So I only need to cut like a half inch piece in here. That's the uh, width of the dovetails.
Now I need to find a, a appropriate piece of wood. Uh, the reason I say that is in the introduction I said that this desk was mahogany. I thought it looked like that, but it's birch. Okay, I found a nice little piece of birch here. It's got some nice straight grain and a little bit of color to it. Okay, let's see what we got here and uh, cut that new dovetail. I realize now that that uh, dovetail comes right off the bevel, so I think I can mark it out on the top side too.
I just realized I made a mistake. I cut, I laid out the dovetail wrong. I didn't take into account uh, the bevel on the other side. I'm going to take the heat gun. Uh, I'm going to remove this piece, put a new piece on, and lay it out again. It really will only take me, I'll lose a day on the job waiting for the glue to dry, but it really only take me about uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes to do this. Well, that took me about an hour to get the piece of wood off and a new piece of wood on. And uh, you'll see, I've just laid it out better. I corrected my mistake. Okay, good so far. Thank goodness my dovetail's too big. I can pare it down. Okay, I've been, uh, back and forth with this about a dozen times. I think I've got it fit pretty well. Now I need to carve out the center of the rail to create these bead moldings. But before I continue with the rail, I want to get this piece glued back here. I want that all in place before I glue the rail in. Okay, back to the rail. Okay, before we glue in the rail, I want to remove these drawer runners. I'm going to replace them anyway. No. Now we can start figuring out uh, where all those pieces go.
Yeah, this definitely goes. This one goes here. Uh, yeah, this one too. And here's an escutcheon, although that doesn't seem to be the right one. So I've got all these little decorative brackets ready to glue back on. I mean, I've glued on uh, glue blocks uh, in advance. I'll put them in later. Now I can work on this uh, escutcheon. The escutcheon gets nailed on. And you can see that the area where the nails went into, the wood is all gone. You know, in the introduction, I said this was mahogany. Then when I was working on the drawers, I said, no, it's birch. But this front still looked like mahogany to me, and now with this lock off, I can see that it is mahogany. I believe the, the lid, uh, possibly the desktop in here, and this top are mahogany, and the rest of it is birch. Ella, what are you up to? I'm going to try to drill those uh, damaged areas out. If that doesn't work, I'll chisel them out. I had to turn the clamp around uh, to get the handle out of the way. I'm using the drill in reverse. Counterintuitive, I know. Well, I'll try forward. Okay, now we can get back to uh, this repair. Okay, it looks good. Uh, obviously, the, the, the tail here, the dovetail, is uh, sitting proud. I knew it was large. I'm going to trim it down. And these areas uh, were damaged. I'll have to fill those gaps in with a little putty.
Okay, I've just spent about a half an hour uh, sanding this and shaping it and getting everything ready to stain. This is Mohawk Ultra Stain Brown Maple. I've thinned it out a bit uh, with some alcohol. Yeah, it looks okay. My main concern is if it was too dark. This is a fast drying dye stain, uh, which is nice because then as it dries, you can add more color if you think you need it. I noticed uh, when I was working here that this uh, rail looked loose and it moves. This one looks loose but it doesn't move. I'm going to sneak some glue behind there and clamp it up. Okay, I've still got to install these new drawer runners. Uh, in, while I'm getting these ready and installing them, I'm going to seal that repair area with shellac. I want to make slotted holes for the screws uh, in these drawer runners. So I mounted a uh, 3 16 router bit in the drill press. Clamp down another board as a guide and then uh, make the slotted holes. The last time I did something like this, someone commented uh, that I should use a flathead or roundhead screw with a washer, and that is correct, that's a good idea. And that way the screw can move back and forth within the slot. But in an old cabinet like this, if I, and if I was building a new cabinet, I would definitely do it this way. Uh, but in an old cabinet like this, I prefer an old screw, and I, which I've countersunk, and it can still rock like this. And I think that's enough movement uh, for what's going to happen here. like a full three-eighths. Luckily there's room in the case. It's these blocks that are stopping the drawer, so I've got to take those out and uh, cut them back about three-eighths of an inch. Boy, I put a lot of heat on these blocks and it's just not budging them. Uh, this is a good example of, you know, you do the drawer repairs, the drawer works beautifully, now you got this unforeseen problem with these blocks. 
I'm going to have to uh, use an oscillating saw to cut these blocks back. Uh, you may want to take your headphones or your earbuds off. All the drawers are working really well. I haven't even waxed them yet. So now I need to get back to this, uh, finish up this uh, touch-up work here. First I'm going to smooth it out with a Scotch-Brite uh, ultra-fine pa pad. That's a gray pad. This is dye-stained. It's thinned out, perfect brown, Mohawk ultra stain. Now I've let that dye stain dry for about an hour. It dries very quickly. And uh, now I'm going to uh, spray this. I'm not going to use clear shellac. I'm going to use this raw umber toner, which is uh, acrylic lacquer. Okay, we've got some uh, paint on this drawer front, a little bit of paint on the carcass. I'm going to use some of this uh, goof off product to see if it comes off. It's interesting how it like instantly disappears. Now I'm going to wax. I'm going to use paste wax. Wax up the, the drawer runners, the sides of the drawers, and the sides of the cabinet too, because these sides run along the, the insides of the cabinet. Okay, now I'm going to go over the whole piece with my uh, uh, Howard's Feed and Wax. This is orange oil and beeswax polish. I'm going to use a uh, 4 aught steel wool. This is the same dye stain I was using to do the other touch-ups. So there you go, a really nice uh, 18th century, possibly 18th century slant top desk. In the introduction I said it was mahogany. Then when I was working on the drawers I said, oh my god, it's birch. Well, the lid and the top are mahogany, and the rest of the cabinet is birch. Uh, it originally had a very dark finish. Uh, there's evidence of it on the, on the drawer sides. And then here, interestingly enough, the pullouts still have the uh, original finish on them. Now, the reason this came into the shop was because the drawers uh, would not work at all. Uh, I repaired uh, this rail and I repaired the drawer sides, drawer bottoms, drawer runners, and they actually uh, work well now. This desk has been in the owner's family for generations, uh, tracing back a couple hundred years. They have a genealogy for their family going back to 1630. So this desk will stand as a testament to their legacy, and it will contain all the information that they have on their family and the genealogy. I think it's a great idea. And in that way, future generations can really relate to this and they'll keep it. Oh, 
I forgot to mention, I have about 30 hours in this job, and, uh, and here are the tools I used.